2020 Saturday morning service. Brethren, we really thank God for 2020 Passover. As we were told on Thursday and also on Friday, that the Passover delivers. The Passover delivers. Yes, brethren, we are fully aware that we're going through the lockdown, we're going through the social distancing and the quarantines. But we have good news for you, brethren. We have good news. None of those man-made systems would have effect on the power of the Passover. The Passover has power to deliver us. It has the same power that it had over 2,000 years ago. The Passover has the same power that it had in 1955. The Passover has the same power that it had in 2019 and in 2020. The Passover has the power. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter where you come from. As long as you open your heart, the Lord is available, is able. The blood of Jesus is available to deliver you from your illness, to deliver you from sins. The blood of Jesus is available. The Passover delivers. It has the power throughout all generations. This morning we're going to talk about prayer. And on Thursday, we were informed about the disciples where the Lord was telling them to pray so that they don't enter into temptation. But let's read that scripture that was opened on Thursday, which is Luke 22, verse 39, but we'll only read 40 up to 46 40 and when he was at the place he said unto them pray that ye enter not into temptation 41 and he was withdrawn 
from them about a stone's cast and kneel down and pray. 42, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. 43, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. 44, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drop of blood falling down to the ground. 45, and when he rose up from prayer, he was come to his disciples, and he found them sleeping for sorrow. 46, and he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Here we see the Lord. He was about to go into a very difficult period. We see the Lord going to face the situation that requires prayer. And he prayed. He even withdrew himself from the disciples. But when he goes back to them, he found them asleep. And this was difficult. The disciples were supposed to have been supporting him with prayer. They were also going to go this complicated situation that required prayer. But they could not keep up. They could not cope. And what they were about to go through required prayer, required preparation of prayer. But the Lord had to pray alone until the angel came from heaven to come and strengthen him. Brethren, the whole world is going through turmoil. There's pandemic left and right, but we're not going to glorify the pandemic. What we are saying is that the Lord has withdrawn us. As the, Lord, as the Lord was withdrawn from the disciples, the Lord has withdrawn us. He has withdrawn us from our jobs. He has withdrawn us from even the church. He has withdrawn us from our relatives. Many a times we are unable to pray because we're thinking I must sleep early so that I'm able to go to work or I must prepare for tomorrow. But the Lord has withdrawn us away from the active uh, activities of, 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 of work from social activities that are taking our time, the Lord removed us so that we can be at home. We are at home with our children. We are then are able to pray for what we are about to go through. Brethren, not even our political leaders know what will happen in two months' time. And therefore, all of us need to seek the face of, of God to say, God lead us, God guide us. And we also know that the coming of the Lord is close. And therefore, as a church, we must be ready. When we say the coming of the Lord, it's not just statement that the coming of the Lord. Once we acknowledge that the Lord is coming, it means even the readiness in us. And how will that readiness be effected? But through prayer. So what we are about to go through, brethren, the whole world, prayer is needed. Even in countries where they mocked God, they are learning to understand that there is God because they have tried everything to try and save themselves but they can see they are not succeeding and brethren what we are going through and what is about to happen will require prayer all of us pray let's see another uh, king here who was also about to go into a very complicated uh, situation his name is Jehoshaphat if you go to the second Book of the Chronicles, chapter 20. Let me start in one. It says, And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, with them, other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And there came some that Jehoshaphat saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is Engedi. Three, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah, three, four, Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. When Jehoshaphat was told, you will be in big trouble, 
there is a big army that is coming. And he looked at his army, he realized that he does not stand a chance. They say Jehoshaphat feared, but what did he fear and do? He feared and he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat realized that what he was about to go through, he had no answers to. What he was about to go through, he had no solution, but his answer was from the Lord. His salvation was God, where he feared and he did not fall apart. He feared, he did not just panic. He feared, but he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. This is what we are saying. God has withdrawn us from our many schedules and activities that takes away our time for what we are going through. Even our political leaders don't even know what will happen in two months' time. And therefore, when God has set us aside so that we can seek Him, we should seek Him. He's got the answers to all our problems. And Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. If you go to 42 to 12, you hear now he's praying to God. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. He proclaimed a fast. It means everybody, the young and old, they were praying and seeking the face of God. And when God is approached that way, God answers. If you go to 15, God answers. And he said, How can ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thou says the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God, the ancient of days, the God of the armies of Israel. He took over the battle. He says, Don't be afraid of this great multitude. Don't be afraid of this powerful enemy. Seeing that you have requested me, seeing that you have approached me, I will take over. For what Jehoshaphat was about to go through, he needed to pray. He, he, he withdrew himself and the whole of Judah went on their knees and they sought the face of the Lord. And a fast was proclaimed. If we lose and miss this opportunity, which is like God given opportunity, where we are not allowed on the streets, we are not allowed to roam around. Wherever you go, there are roadblocks. God is not panicking. God is fully in control. He's sitting in his throne. He is not confused. He knew it when it started. He is aware of what is happening. And therefore, we need to just seek his face in the name of Jesus. Let's look at another people that went into trouble. This was Esther. I will sort of paraphrase it, but I will read there and there. We know the story of Esther. Hamani wanted to kill the Jews. And Mordecai was Esther's, Queen Esther's uncle. He got to know about the plot. When they realized that they were in trouble, look what they do. Then Esther bade them, this is uh, Esther 4, verse 16 and maybe starting from 15 then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer go gather together all the Jews that are present in Sushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days night or day I also and my maidens will fast likewise and so will I go unto the king which is not according to the law and if i perish i perish 17 and Mordecai. so Mordecai went his way and did according 
to all that Esther had commanded. When they realized of the plot by Haman to kill all the Jews, they didn't just panic and fall apart. They, the instruction was they must all the Jews must pray and also fast. And indeed they prayed and fast and fasted. And indeed when Esther went to see the, the king, although it was not a tradition, you wouldn't go to the king if you are a queen unless the king had asked for you to come. There was a danger that the king would kill Esther. But because they had fasted, because they had prayed, when Esther approached the king, that changed the tradition and the king did not kill Esther. So they prayed, they prayed, and not only that, and then the, the queen Esther was able to present a problem to the king. I'm just trying to cut the story short. If you go to chapter 6, I will read from 1 up to 3. And on the night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Began and Tiresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand unto the king, and three, and the king said, What honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, There is nothing that was done. So here is the story. The Jews were about to be killed because of Haman. They prayed, and Esther also prayed when she approached the king to present her problems. They, because they prayed, the king could not kill the queen. And that was not the tradition. The king was able to listen to Esther. If you go to 6, because the Jews had prayed, Mordecai had done something good, but that thing was noted in the king's records, but nothing was done. Now, because they had prayed, the king could not sleep. Day and night, the, the king could not sleep that night because of the prayer. The prayer that was done could not give him peace. And the scripture says, on oh, no, that night he could not, could not the king sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. This is what prayer can do. Things that were forgotten because they have invited God. They have invited the ancient of days, the God of the armies of Israel. The Lord of hosts, he, the king could not sleep until he remembered that. But there is a book of records. And they say, go and get it and read it for me. And it was found written that Mordecai it, was able to, to alert the king about the people that were, wanted to, to overthrow him. And it was written in that book of record. If they did not pray, the king has been sleeping. He, he did not bother about that record of books. But because he had prayed, he couldn't sleep. And prayer of the Jews made him to remember that Mordecai was not treated well. Mordecai was not rewarded for what he has done. So this is what prayer can do. For what the Jews were about to go through, Mordecai and Esther and the Jews, prayer was needed. If they did not pray, they could have been destroyed. If they did not pray, they could have been killed, but they could not be killed because they have prayed and asked God for direction and asked God for protection. Prayer is not an option, but prayer is a necessity. In these days where we live, we surrounded by all complicated reports that come. Some of it are fake news. We need God. For what we are about to go through, we need prayer. And all of us must pray. The young must pray. The old must pray. The children must pray. All of us must pray. If we don't pray, we will find ourselves in trouble. The last book that we can read is the second book of Chronicles, chapter 7. We start from 13 up to 15. If I 
of 13, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or I command the locust to devour the land, or I send pestilence among my people, 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 15. And my eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made into this place. It says, If I shut heaven, on, on 13, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land. In East Africa, there is, they have a, a problem of the locusts that are eating their crops. Or if I send the pestilence amongst my people, we have the pandemic that is affecting the whole world. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven will, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 15. And mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place god is ready god is ready to listen god is ready to act but we need to play our part but with us where god has stepped in and he has withdrawn us i see this as the mercy of god i see this as an opportunity that in this short time that we have been withdrawn where you are with your family it has never happened i have never seen it i have never read about it i'm seeing it for the first time but i thank god for this opportunity to be with my wife and children so that we can pray but all of us should see this as an opportunity that god has withdrawn us not just for withdrawing sake but god can see what is ahead what we will be going through we need to be prayed up we need to have prayed if we don't we will fall apart we are not supposed to be like those disciples who could keep up with the lord and yet what they were about to go through required people that have prayed up that's why the lord prayed and he prayed in agony he prayed he withdrew himself he prayed because he couldn't go into that situation without having prayed but the disciples could not keep up so it is our prayer that when god has withdrawn us from all the activities that are taking our time when god has withdrawn us even from the church activity when god has withdrawn us from the social activities and the business activities so that we can now be with our our family and god's timing is the best all things always works out for good to them that loves the lord and god made it possible that this withdrawal of all of us into our community and our family happens during the passover the passover that delivers this is the passover that all of us must just seek the face of god this is the passover that we must pray and seek the face of god i pray that as we go on our knees we call god jehovah the ancient of days we call the prince of peace the lion of the tribe of judah and say tell us where to go tell us what to do because you are the creator of mankind we thank god let's take this time that god has created as an opportunity for us to pray some more as an opportunity to know god better as an opportunity to read the word some more as an opportunity because it won't last forever this time will go and we'll fall back into our activities but what is ahead requires us to be prayed up we must have prayed if we don't pray we will fall apart if we don't pray we will not be helpful to our generation if we don't pray we won't know what to do and we will panic and run away jehoshaphat did not panic he sought the face of god esther and motika did not just panic yes they feared but they sought the face of god jehoshaphat yes he feared but he did not fall apart 
they sought the face of God with all Judah, the old and the young. They went to God and said, we don't know what to do. Even Esther and Mordecai and the Jews, they went to God and said, we don't know what to do. So it is up to us, brethren, that we go on our knees and say, oh, Jehovah, you take charge. We don't know, not even our presidents know what's going to happen in two months' time. All over the world, the president are panicking, and all the big countries with good health care and good hospitals, they are good doctors. They are not getting it right. And all those countries that were distancing themselves from God, they are beginning to see that there is a God in heaven who can help us. We thank God. Let's go on our knees in the name of Jesus. Amen.